Hello, it's Maxi Moyer and welcome to this week's playlist, Dual Language Songs. I've always enjoyed dual language songs. That's songs which slip in and out of two different languages, e.g. Doris Day's K Sera Sera from 1956 and Wooden Heart from Elvis Presley in 1960. I'm not entirely sure why this is, but my Anglo-Polish childhood was full of lively conversations that began in English before flipping into Polish, then back again to English. From an early age, also, my mother taught me Polish nursery rhymes as my father enjoyed the thrilling momentum and sheer grit of a Russian army choir on his down set. Whatever the reason, I've always felt good singing songs with lyrics in different languages, it seems that multilingual music has grown in popularity over the years. My playlist brings together a selection of good music sung primarily in English, but with interludes of French, Spanish, Italian, German and Portuguese. The first half features two dual language classics, Barcelona and Chanson d'Amour. Barcelona from Freddie Mercury and the world famous opera diva Montserrat Caballé was recorded in 1987 for the Barcelona Summer Olympics. The pair made huge leaps into each other's musical domains. For Queen's rock frontman, it was his high-profile debut in opera, and for Montserrat, her first venture into rock. The collaboration began after Freddie mentioned in 1986, in an interview for Spanish TV, that he would love to meet her. When Barcelona was selected by the Olympic Committee, Montserrat, a native of the city, stepped up to submit an entry for the opening song. Attracted by the prospect of a prominent collaboration, she summoned Freddie to assist. In fact, she proposed they made an album together, and Freddie agreed. Although the Olympic ceremony was four years away, recording had to be complete by 1988. The project was complicated by Montserrat's tight international schedule. Freddie rose to the challenge by recording the song and singing her part in falsetto. He sent her the tape in preparation for the limited studio sessions they would have together. Barcelona is seen as a rare textbook example of how pop and opera can work together well. Where Freddie articulated his every word, Montserrat focused on the musical tone Although her lyrics were less clear, the melody was perfect. Freddie was amazed by his partner's ability to control her voice. When in the fade-outs he stepped away from the mic to soften his voice, she didn't move an inch. When it came to the crescendo, however, he was almost shouting to be heard. Although the duo worked together for only a short time, they clearly enjoyed collaborating and remained close friends. The first live performance of Barcelona was at the Ibiza Festival in May 1987, followed by the Open Air Lani Festival a year later for the arrival from Seoul of the Olympic flag. Sadly for Freddie, already suffering from AIDS, this was to be his last live performance. In spite of all the diligent preparation, the song was abruptly dropped from its destined role as the game's opener when he died in 1991. Instead, a recording was played over a travel log of the city in Olympic broadcasts. Barcelona reached number two in the UK charts and for many Brits, at least, remains amongst the most memorable events of the Games. My other absolute classic from the first half of the playlist is Chanson d'Amour, Song of Love, by Manhattan Transfer on their 1977 Coming Out album. The song was a cover of Wayne Shanklin's original from two decades earlier. The band gave his number an Edith Piaf-like treatment, which helps rejuvenate a long-forgotten old-time jazz style. For whatever reason, this delightful recording with English and French lyrics made little impact on the American music charts when it was released. In Europe, however, it reached number three in Belgium and number eight in France. Perhaps it's significant that in both countries where English is an official language of the European Union, French is a native tongue. 